glory now we give you honor and we call our hearts to a repentant place a place where we can become one with you afresh and receive the joy of the Lord as our strength and so we magnify you today we give you honor and we give you glory in Jesus' name Amen Hallelujah if, but it's not, if this were our last day, I want Impact to know what y'all have meant to Karina and I. We were struggling, and y'all came to us, to this building, and to experience the love of God in a church, this has been one of the top places that you can truly see the love of God in the people. I've been to a lot of churches and man, they're cold. They're a last day church. Jesus. And I want to thank Bishop. Um, I'm not uplifting him, but I am uplifting the spirit in him. Yeah. 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 When he first came to this church, we were here and he came with two or three people to the service. And so here this man comes in with these dreads, and I'm like, God, help me not to judge. Because that, that old flesh was rising up. So he started giving a word. He got permission to give a word to my wife and I. So he started speaking, and I'm like, oh, man, he's reading the playbook. And I said, this is of God. So the next Sunday, I don't know, the first Sunday the, the impact came here, I was here. And uh, it helped change me, it helped shape me in a lot of ways, and it was a time that we were struggling. And now here's the flesh. He cuts his dreads off and I missed them. <laughs> <laughs> me too, me too. <laughs> the flesh is a funny thing. I'm going to give you just a little brief testimony. Uh, we all go through things, but one of the greatest things that I've had to go through in my life is financially. Uh, I had a dramatic encounter in getting and meeting God. I had a salvation that I'll never forget, August 16, 1998. I can honestly say that I felt electricity come in my body, and I was a changed man. But it took 16 years for God to break me down. Because wow. I put money before God. Yeah. I had found Jesus. I loved Him. But I was still serving money. Wow. I had made it my God. And here a few months ago, God revealed something to me through the Word that I had made it my idol even though I loved God. And listen, I know what it's like to come home to have your lights turned off. I know what it's like to have the family neighbors to send their eight-year-old over there to want to know, did your lights get cut off? All you had to do was call and ask me. I would have told you. Don't send no young into my house to try to find out something what God's doing in my life. But on the other hand, to me, it was embarrassing at the time. I didn't understand. I didn't know. I couldn't. I just couldn't collect in my mind because here I was a sinner. I could go to the bar Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, spend all the money I need or want, and have money the next, the following week. Then two years into my walk with God, I can't even pay bills. So, I will tell you, I know what it's like to stand out with God to have your breeches down around your ankles and you got nothing but your underwear on. Yes. Yes. 
Because a lot of people, I live in a small community, a lot of people, they seen this, they talked about it, it got back to me, I know, and it come out of the own church that I was going to. So church, if somebody's going through something, you don't need to talk about it. That's right. You might all go slip a hundred dollar bill in there. Come on! Oh my God. But even through the love of money, God showed me this. Now, when I speak this, I don't want you to think about, oh, it's your wife, or it's your husband, or it's your neighbor. Oh, it's that person there. You need to look at yourself. Because we get a bad habit in church when a man speaks a word or a woman, oh, it's for them. But this word is for me if it's for nobody else here in the house. And this is the uh, Stephen, the martyr in Acts. He's speaking to the religious leaders, the ones that killed Jesus. And he was talking about Moses. And if you read this, and I'm not going to read all of it, but if you look at Moses, Moses is a typology of Christ in the Old Testament. So Moses was up on the mountain getting the commandments from God. And he was gone so long that people done forgot who he was. Forty days and they forgot God. So what did they do? And it says in verse 41, Acts chapter 7, they made a calf in those days and offered sacrifices unto the idol. So the calf, now, just to set this up, before I got saved, I had put a figure and an image in my head because I was going into business. And I emulated this plan after a man in my community because he was very successful financially. And I love what, he, what the kind of work is residential construction. I ain't went to him and said, hey man, I need a job, but I ain't going to stay with you. He said, come on. And he taught me a lot. So that was the image that I had in my mind that I was going to be like this man but that's not what God had in mind. I had fabricated the calf means to fabricate the image of a bullock. So I had put in, I had put this in my mind. And even after I got saved, I had this same vision in my mind. And I made this idiotic statement in Sunday school class. I'll never forget it. I told somebody, I said, I'm just going to make a lot of money and give to God. God don't need my money. God is not after anybody's money. Yes, He is. But God needs wrong. He needs that will and spirit. That's right. That's right. He don't need anything that I have other than to be a vessel for Him. That's right. So this word here, uh, idol, it's an image that is for worship by implication a heathen God. Now the Israelites had just been delivered from Egypt. Moses is getting the commandments and they're serving two heathen gods, Moloch and Rempha. So, we can put these images in our mind, but yet it's not of God. But well, this is the thing that they've done. They rejoiced in the work of their own hands. And let me tell you something, people. And this is from the Hebrew, the original meaning. To put in a very good... Rejoice. To put in a very good frame of mind. To make merry. It comes from the word, the feelings or the sensitive nature. The mind or the cognitive faculties understanding. People, if there's one thing that I can say to you today, the things of God are not of our feelings and of our mind. Don't get confused just because you have a good feeling about God. God will put things on you that you don't understand, you don't under, you don't know. It's of God that you don't understand and it don't suit and line up with your feelings. We're not to serve God by our feelings. That's right. Now the Word of God says in Romans that the carnal mind is enmity from God. Or am I dreaming that I read that in Romans? Is that what it says? That's what it says. 
When you put your carnal flesh, Zippy says something about a while ago, you have to push past the flesh and get in the spirit. Now, I was called to live by faith. You know, I have made almost to six figures, but I have no idea where any of that money would be today. Why? Because I was in the carnal mind, the carnal flesh, and God let me have holes in my pockets. And even though I loved Him and trusted Him, I didn't trust Him. You cannot serve God in the flesh. There's no way. It's, it's devilish. It's sottish. It's from below. It's not from above. It says they rejoiced in the works of their hands. And their works here means it's a toil. It's an effort or an occupation. And they've done it on their own. And that's through the self. By your hands. The hands here means through the idea of hollowness for grasping. I was grasping for riches of the world when God was wanting me to have the riches of the Spirit. Would it be greater that I could go lay hands on somebody and they could get healed or go and send them all the money that they have and send them on to hell? The hand. The hand can, you can look at this two ways, negative or positive. The hand is supposed to be a power. It's literal or figuratively. And it means by an instrument of God. Or in the negative sense, the hand can just be grasping, reaching for something that ain't there. It's a gulf. We can put a gulf between us and God. And people, if I could say one thing to you today, that I've learned. And there's only one man in the Word of God that records this. And this is the Apostle Peter. He described it as faith. We're to walk by faith. Peter described it as precious. In 2 Peter, the first chapter in his letter, he says our faith is precious. And if you look at that word precious, it means that it was bought with a price. It was paid for with a penalty. And that that's what Jesus done. And if you look at the life that Peter lived, he walked with the Son of God on earth. Physically walked with Him. Touched Him. Broke bread with Him. Have you ever had that feeling when you've been in sin and the Holy Spirit comes and He convicts you? And you say, get away from me, God. I'm not worthy of you. And that's what Peter was speaking here. We have a precious faith. Yes. And that's how to, I have to live by the penalty and the price that he paid. Whether I'm broke or rich, it don't matter. All right.